simply ignorance. So if you're going to question Angel, why would the Spaniards, this is such an awful thing, they're burning all the records, now you know why. They thought that the records of the mice were the Bibles of the devil. So they were reading things based on the only kind of knowledge they had. I'm going to ask you all a little favor. Everybody gather around me. Uh, I, need, I need everybody to look at this carefully, okay? I'm a crazy kind of person that instead of pointing out buildings, I like to explain everything you normally hear about. For instance, people have ever learned about the Mayan numbers? You heard about the Mayan mathematics? They use a binary system. We use decimal. And they only use three symbols, a seashell, a dot, and a bar. The seashell is zero, the dot is a unit, and a bar is five. Is that clear? But this gentleman was teaching us all sorts of things in his conference, and we got freaked out. You should have seen our faces. He said, don't forget when you do your tours to inform your passengers that the seashell for the Mahes was zero. One is a dot, two were two dots, three were three dots, four were four dots, and five is a bar. So if you want to make six, five one makes six, five and two, seven, five and three, eight, five and four dots, nine, two bars of five, ten with the dot, 11. Do you get it, guys? Three bars. 15 with the dot. 16. Are you getting it? Well, we said, sir, we don't write from left to right. We have nothing to do with Janus. You should have seen his face. He was like... And he saw in his mind what we were trying to tell him. You know what the question they all had? Where did the mice get the idea of a pyramid? It's the mother of science of all sciences. Mathematics. We can have different languages, but you know what's a universal form of communication? Mathematics. That's universal, so attention. Seashell is zero, and as the mines right from the top to the bottom, one goes below zero. Two goes below number two. One, sorry, below number one. Three, four, and five is above. So when they designed the numbers, they saw this, they said, oh, let's build something like this. <laughs> <laughs> His amigos. <laughs> so imagine how history is. It's very simple. Some passengers told me, Angel, why would the minds just come to number five? And from five do the multiples, because today we use from zero to nine, and after nine we start to repeat. Right? It's very simple. How many fingers do you have in a hand? Five. But why did they use a decimal system? How many fingers do I have? Seven. And how many toes do I have? Seven. So the minds are not like you saying one, two, three, no. They say zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So they use the bodies. No aliens, <laughs> just their bodies. <laughs> okay, guys? Then they said, but Angel, we found the Mayan leaders like Tutankhamun and Nefertiti with elongated heads. I say, you can do that when you're three years old, until you're three years old. What happens when a baby sleeps so much on their back? Mm -hmm. they, get they get a flat head. So if you do the same thing with the forehead, it doesn't cause pain or brain damage, it just flattens the head up. That's why in the USA, there's a group of native indigenous called the Flathead West Coast Indians. That's why Tutankhamun had it in Nefertiti in Egypt, and this is how the Mayan people achieved it. Mis amigos, look how they blindfolded the Mayan head of a baby. So it's all being done today. So it's not gone. The people are still here. The culture is still alive. The language is still spoken. We just still come to Tukoba to pray. That's why if you come down here in a special event for us, you'll see hundreds of people out there praying. Is that clear? So the religion, the faith, the culture, the people are still alive. That's why I was so frustrated when people said they were teaching us. I said, don't worry, man. In my country, my book of anthropology said that the Egyptians disappeared because they're trying to tell us they disappeared into my societies. But the people were still there. Do you get my message? Now here comes the, the surprising part. They found 3,000 monuments here. That's a pyramid. Okay. There's more buildings. Look how everything was overgrown by the jungle. You saw that massive wall. And I don't know if you paid attention that we just went gradually from the ground level all the way up here. You know what? They're using gravity. Because they made a wall for the whole place. And if it rains, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to be a lake. It's going to be flooded. So they elevated in 45 degrees from the pyramids. And when it rains, creates like rivers and everything is flushed back out. Is that clear? But when they study the peninsula, the peninsula is flat as a tortilla. So that means that we just have limestone, the water sucked in. So that means that in Yucatan, there shouldn't be any wells, there shouldn't be any lakes, rivers, or creeks on the surface. And what's the first thing you saw when you moved in? So that's a contradiction. 
So you know what they did? They said, so much rock for the floor to elevate this. So much rock to divide 20 square miles of the site. So much rock to put the monuments, and we can't find a quarry. <laughs> One of them, 10 years later, thought that Spacious brought them. You know what they did? Got a diver. Went into the lake. And guess what? The lake is the crater. <laughs> they found how the walls of the lake were perfectly cut it up. So when you have two temperatures of water crashing, it's not just salt and fresh. People has it wrong. If you got water of 55 degrees versus 77 and you put the temperature, it's going to create a brackish effect. So even though they said, let's go to Koba, let's uncover Koba, not knowing the language, they didn't understand that the reason of this place was in their nose when the name. So the Mayan people said that the place is called Kop Ha. Kop in Maya means brackish. Ha means water. So Koba makes a reference to the water of the underground freshwater river crashing the warm water from the rain. We don't have the word sinkhole, so to say sink in Maya, we say chi, and to say well, we say chen. So when you put it together, how does it sound? Chi chen. <laughs> and you know who settled there? The wizards of the water. You know how we say wizard eats? You know how we say water? Ha. I just said koha. So chi chen sinkholes eats the wizards of the water that settle by the sinkholes. <laughs> Attention. We don't have the word swamp, so the Mayan language is descriptive. You know how we call the swamp? Stinky land. Hmm? <laughs> you know how we say something that's really in my yaptu. You know how we say land, lump. So when you put it together, how does it sound? Tulum. <laughs> so Tulum means swamp. Well, this place means brackish water. And Chichen Itza means the place where the wizards settled by the sinkholes. Because ancient cultures were descriptive. For instance, equinox is not a name. What does it mean in Latin? Okay, you know, Can you shake your hands in here? <laughs> Today, I'd say you're not going to get sacrificed. Don't worry. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> what your parents told you, okay? In, the, in this context, I'm just trying to make path. clear that, that Senores, if we learn the history from the local version, from the local perspective, I'm not saying it's the truth. But we certainly like to share our side of the story, too. Okay? Let's keep going. Thank you very much. Is everybody okay with this?